Hey, praise the Lord, saints of God. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Just wanted to come back on here with a brief teaching installment of when the temple in heaven is open, everything will change. Uh, in my studies today, I was in Psalm 55 and in my uh, deeper dive, I was led to Judges chapter 9. And in Judges chapter 9, we see a type and shadow of the end of the age, which is about to happen, where Abimelech, whose name means my father is king, uh, kills uh, 70 of his brothers who were uh, the sons of Gideon. And in the slain of his 70 brothers, one of the sons, the youngest son, Jotham, uh, Yotham, which means uh, Yah is complete, he escapes. And so, of course, this motif of the first shall be last and the last shall be first is seen in Judges chapter 9, right at the beginning, where we see a picture of the rapture. Uh, because we know that uh, the younger son, which is the Gentiles, okay, the Gentiles, we were the younger son in the prodigal son story, where the older son represents Israel. And what happens? The younger son, he goes off into a far country, and he wastes uh, his inheritance on riotous living. And so what happens, the younger son, once he finds out that, you know, there's no sustenance in the pig pen, he comes to his senses and he goes back to his father's house, representing the rapture. And the father comes out to meet him. Jesus Christ comes out to meet us in the clouds as we assemble in the clouds and he comes down in the air. Uh, and what happens, we go back to his house and we have a grand party, right? That's in the story of the prodigal son. But what happens, uh, the older, the older brother, he's left out in the field. He's left out in the field. And when he's left out in the field, he, he's not at the party. So he represents Israel being left behind. And he's mad about not being at the party. He said, you never killed the fatted calf for me. So he missed that on the marriage supper of the lamb. But back to Judges chapter 9. We see that story again about the last being first and the first being last. So Jotham, the youngest son of the 72 sons of Gideon, he escapes from Abimelech's terror. When Abimelech goes to kill uh, his 70 brothers, the youngest son, Jotham, escapes, which represents the rapture. And then we see Jotham upon a mountain. And this mountain that he's on is key because he's on the Mount of Blessing. He's, it's a, he's, on, the Mount, he's on Mount Gerizim. So if you go back to the Torah, the Tanakh, when you uh, read Moses, God commanded Moses to have six of the tribes stand on Mount Gerizim and six of the tribes stand on Mount Ebal. And on Mount Gerizim, God told Moses to pronounce the blessing. This is another motif that runs throughout the Bible about the blessing always coming first. So Jotham in Judges chapter 9, after he escapes, he goes to the mountain of blessing. He goes to Mount Gerizim, the church. We escape to the Mount of Blessing. We escape the reign of the one who says, my father is king because he wants to be like God. You know, the Antichrist and dwelt by Satan. We escape his whole reign of terror, which is what Jotham does. He escapes the whole reign of terror. And then he appears on the Mount of Blessing because the blessing always comes before the curse. Mount Ebal is the Mount of the Curse. And what happens? He gives the parable. Uh, Jotham gives the parable about the trees, and this is the whole story of going back to Psalm 55, which led me to Judges chapter 9. So, uh, Jotham, he represents the palm tree, okay? This is just like this jacket, this Letterman jacket, the palm tree, comes from Psalm 92, verse 12, Ezekiel in the Millennial Temple. Many other passages of Scripture talks about the palm tree. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. The righteous are the palm trees. We are the trees that are saved first okay uh we are the trees that are saved first remember when jesus christ healed the blind man he healed him spiritually first because when he opened his eyes the blind man said i see all men like trees walking so when god in the flesh emmanuel jesus christ healed the blind man he first saw into the spiritual world and he saw everybody as a tree because we're all trees the question is what type of tree are you well the church the bride of christ OK, all of us who are in the body of Christ, we are palm trees. Hallelujah. 
And so Jotham in Judges chapter nine, he represents the palm trees who escape to the Mount of Blessing, Mount Gerizim. And what happens on Mount Gerizim? Well, he gives a parable about all the other trees, okay? All the other trees who are left behind under the reign of Abimelech, who says, my father is king, but he wants to be God, okay? He wants to rule. He's the bramble. He wants to rule, okay? He's the thorn bush. He wants to rule, okay? He wants to be like God as Satan incarnate, Abimelech, okay? And so he gives the parable of um, uh, the olive tree, uh, the fig tree, the vine tree, and uh, uh, all the trees go to the olive tree, uh, the fig tree, and the vine, uh, but they don't want to rule over all the trees. Okay, but then what happens? He talks about the bramble, which is Abimelech, Satan. Okay, the thorny bush. Okay, he talks about the bramble. And the bramble says, yeah, I'll rule over all you trees. Okay, left behind, dark and cloudy day. None but a bunch of brass and thorns. Okay. Doc in a clouded day. Okay. They're trouble. Okay. They talk about El Dia. Del Senor. Ay! Caramba! Okay. Ay, caramba. Doc in clouded day. Bramble in control. Okay. Abimelech. So Abimelech says, yeah, I rule over all you trees. <laughs> you see, because now the curse comes. Okay, remember Jotham in Judges chapter 9, he's on the Mount of Blessing. He's on Mount Gerizim. He escaped. He escaped. The church escapes. We're the palm tree. Okay, we're the palm trees. Okay, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. In the Millennial Temple, there's palm trees all around the Millennial Temple at their different posts. Okay, these are our positions during the reign of Jesus Christ on the earth. The palm trees are with Jesus Christ because even in the temple itself where God will sit for a thousand years, the Bible says all around inside and outside the temple is a palm tree and a cherub, a palm tree and a cherub, a palm tree and a cherub. Read Ezekiel chapters 40 through 48 for that. So those are our positions. Okay, there's going to be some who has 30 fold, some who has 60 fold, some who has 100 fold. And you see these different palm trees in different positions all around the gates of the temple structure in the millennial reign. And so this is going to be our positions during the time where peace increases and it has no end. Okay, the government shall be upon his shoulders. The increase of his peace and of his government shall have no end, which is about to happen. But back to the story. So we see in Judges chapter 9, hallelujah, a picture of everything. OK, we see a picture of everything, because as you as we further go into the story, the bramble starts to rule. OK, he rules over all the trees who are left behind. OK, the, the trees that are left behind want somebody to rule over them. They didn't want Jesus to rule over them. That's why they got left behind. They're not a palm tree. The palm trees are on the Mount of Blessing. We're on Mount Gerizim. We're Jotham. OK, Yah is complete. We're complete in him. We're identified with Jesus Christ. OK, we're complete in in him. And so when he begins his complete work, okay, when he cuts his short and he makes it, at, uh, he makes the swift end during the seven year tribulation, he cuts those days short. Well, it begins with the rapture where the palm trees are taken out. We go to the Mount of Blessing and then here comes the bramble. Here comes the Bimelech. And in, in the story, because God is in the details, the devil is alive. The devil ain't in no details. I don't give the devil no glory. Okay. The glory of the enemy is Chemosh. Okay, Molech, that's his glory, okay? His glory is nothing but eternal fire, okay? The devil, he don't get no glory around here. Oh, no, okay? None but Yeshua, Hamashiach, okay? The first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who sets free. He's the one who gets all the glory because he's worthy. You see, but in the story, <laughs> this type and shadow is so amazing. I've done teachings on my YouTube channel about it. You could go check it out. Got to go even more in depth than this little brief teaching. But we see that like three years into Abimelech's reign, the Bible says God sends an evil spirit. OK, so that represents the abomination of desolation. OK, because three and a half years into the reign of the Antichrist. OK, here comes the evil spirit. OK, the mask is off. OK, the mask is off. Uh oh. OK, night night. Okay, It's already night night, but it's about to be night night. OK, three and a half years into the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh oh, you thought it was dark and cloudy. Okay. You thought it was dark and cloudy? Okay, you ain't seen nothing yet. Mask off. Evil spirit. 
Okay. <laughs> Mask off. Here go the dragon. Okay, revealed. Okay. Dragon revealed. Okay. Dark and cloudy day. Thriller of the night. Because it's a thriller. Thriller of the night. Okay. Night, night. Go to sleep. And so in Judges chapter 9, <laughs> three years into the reign of Abimelech, for those who left behind, the Bible says an evil spirit comes. Okay, an evil spirit comes, and then that's the abomination of desolation. And as you continue to read Judges chapter 9, after that, well, it's total destruction. Abimelech goes on a war on a, on a war path, and he starts to destroy everything, okay? Which is what the Bible says in the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, okay? Okay, he's going to make war with the saints and overcome them. Okay, he's going to trample even the holy people of God, okay? Those who come to faith during the time of Jacob's trouble because they listen to the two witnesses. And so it talks about that in type and shadow in Judges chapter 9. But here's the kicker. Abimelech comes to his end, which represents Armageddon, when a woman throws a stone on top of his head from a tower. Okay, that's, so that represents the second coming of Jesus Christ because he's the stone cut out without hands. Okay, that's Daniel chapter 2. Right. OK. He's the stone that comes. OK. Riding on a white horse. Hallelujah. And so who's the woman? OK. The woman is the bride of Christ because we're right with him. OK. The stone goes first. Hallelujah. That's that stone that comes down and cracks the Bimelech's head. <laughs> OK. That's Jesus Christ. OK. The chief cornerstone. OK. The stone which the builders rejected, which has now become the head of the corner. And who's with him? The bride of Christ is the woman that throws the stone. Hallelujah. We're coming back with him on white horses. And so it's just so amazing. It's just such a refresher uh, because, um, like I said, I've taught about this uh, a couple of times, previous videos, but it's always good to have a refresher. And Psalm 55 is like another, like I said, I started off with Psalm 55, and that talks about, it's the contemplation of David, and it talks about those who are going to be left behind. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Psalm 55 is a whole another teaching in and of itself. So needless to say, I encourage you. Uh, to study, to show yourselves approved, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And uh, maybe always give God praise because he's worthy of all glory and all honor. And of course, because now that I have a business, I have to promote this business because it's all about preaching the love of God. Okay, and so uh, there's many avenues to preach the love of God. Okay, one way is what we're doing right now, uh, giving God glory with our lips. Another way that we can do it is by wearing clothing that represents Jesus Christ. And so that's what God has told me to do. And um, I pray that you would go to the website, www.preachthelovofgod.com, um, www.preachthelovofgod.com. I'll leave the link in the description box. There's always updates of new items, new clothing apparel, different knickknacks uh, that I continue to update uh, each and every day as the Lord wills and as the Lord tarries. And so I pray that you would uh, uh, find something that, that you might like and purchase it to continue to uh, preach the love of God through clothing, if that's what God uh, puts on your heart. Okay, because these threads, they may change. Okay, but the word of God, it never changes. Hallelujah. Okay, the threads may change, but God, he always stays the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So as we change our threads, may we change these threads OK, to represent uh, our soon coming king, because one day we're going to get the real uh, makeover. Hallelujah. One day real soon. And I hope it happens tonight. I hope it happens right now. while I'm making this video. Because if it happened right now. You know, you're going to see this. I'm going to see you right now in the clouds. And so I'm, I'm watching and, and, and praying always uh, so that I could be accounted worthy to escape all the things that are about to come on the earth and stand before the son of man so that I could be like Jotham. OK, I want to be on the Mount of Blessing. I want to be on Mount Gerizim. I want to escape. The reign of Abimelech, just like you do, too. And guess what? We have escaped because we're in the father's hands. Hallelujah. OK, there's no one greater than the father. And once we're in his hands, nothing can snatch us out of his hand. What can separate us from the love of God? OK, what can separate us from the love of God? You tell me. OK, Paul already said nothing. Who was indwelt by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I was reading about Paul, too. He said uh, in the book of Acts, you know, this is like one of these little things that, you know, you just gloss over sometimes. But. When he was under trial, his accusers, they called him the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. <laughs> I busted up when I read that because I, I had never like it never really grabbed my attention until today. The they called him the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. OK, well, hey, <laughs> uh, call me what you want, but just call me a child of God. 
Hallelujah. Because my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life by faith in Jesus Christ. And you can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life if you come to him. But you have to come to him by faith. Uh, because uh, we're saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God. In other words, as any man should boast. And so, yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, just another little tidbit. Uh, praise the Lord. God put it on my heart because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, one of these days, real soon, I'm going to do a giveaway of a, a Letterman jacket. One of these jackets that I have, I'm about to put them on the site. Um, but I'm going to do a giveaway of one of these jackets, one of these Letterman jackets, and maybe another item. And I'm going to go on a live video. I might even do it this week. I don't know. Whenever God says go, I go. But he put it on my heart to do this because it's more blessed to give than to receive. And so uh, I'm going to do a live video and I'm going to wait about five, ten minutes, you know, do a little teaching. And whoever's on the live video, I'm going to ask a question, a Bible question. I already know, the, I already know uh, the question that God wants me to ask. And it's going to be it's not some hard question. It's not going to be some controversial topic. OK, it's going to be, you know, uh, you know, Bible trivia. Uh, but it's going to be based upon the Old Testament. OK, so there's a clue. So get to reading the 39 books <laughs> if you're interested. And um, in the live session that I do, Lord willing, if the Lord wills, OK, we have to say if the Lord will, you know, tomorrow ain't guaranteed. I don't know what's going to happen the next second. OK, hallelujah. But if the Lord wills, we're going to do this and that. So if the Lord wills, this is what I want to do because he put it on my heart. I'm going to do a giveaway of a jacket like this, Letterman jacket, and it's real nice. I have other styles, too. No, it also has uh, writing on the back. Maybe I'll, I'll put a picture as well for the thumbnail. Uh, just so you can see this style. Um, and I I'm going to ask the question on the live. And because um, I, I guess, you know, maybe uh, the first three people who it depends on how many people are on the live, though. So I don't know. But maybe the first three people who give the right answer, I'm going to give you give the first the first person. I'll give uh, one of these jackets. Second person, I'll give them like a shirt uh, or a sweater or something like that. Third person, a shirt. Uh, because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Okay, you, I mean, you just you, you're not going to be blessed. Okay, you're not going to be blessed if your hands are like this all the time. If you're always holding your hands closed like this, well, how could God bless you? You got to have your hands open. You got to have it open. Hallelujah. And so that's why I always want to be a conduit of blessing. Okay, because we're blessed to be a blessing. And so I just want to bless you, family of God, because I love you. We're brothers and sisters in Christ forever. And we're going to be family uh, forever. We're already family. Hallelujah. And so I uh, just want to be a blessing to somebody out there, uh, three people out there, uh, to celebrate, you know, uh, Jesus Christ and how he has blessed me with this new endeavor of this clothing company. And so, yeah, I want to bless somebody out there. So be looking forward to that live. And if you can, join the live um, so uh, you can answer the trivia question, hopefully get it right, based upon the Old Testament. It's going to be real simple. Well, not real, real simple. I'm not like uh, real simple, but it's it's a uh, if if you're a Bible reader, you 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 will know the answer. And so uh, I said all that to say this. Preach the love of God. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me for the Bible.